125th Contact, Tuesday, December 11, 1979, 12.34 p.m., pages 397, 418. Billy says hello, there is a rather strong storm up here. If you don't maneuver the ship, then. Damn, we'll ram the treetop. Already done. Good day, my child, I'm happy to see you. If you get me the treetop, I could use that at the turn of the year as a Christmas tree. It would be something different, so a top of a full-grown fir. It certainly measures 32 meters. Semiaza says that is your strangest greeting that you have ever made, my dear friend. Be welcome. Yes, there is a strong turbulence here, and I'll get you the top of the tree. Unfortunately, I had to turn off the protective shields and the stabilization fields when I brought you up, therefore, the ship was exposed to the storm gusts, by what means we, unfortunately, damaged the tree. But that isn't so bad. What's much worse are the things and concerns for which I have called you. Billy says you giving me entirely nice hopes for a friendly chat. So I would like to ask you right away before I no longer get an opportunity, what's with the list of names? Semiaza says I have some of those here. I will give them to you, but now, listen carefully to the very unpleasant things that I have to report to you since our last meeting. We have tried to analyze in every detail, all still unchecked recordings as well as recordings that have newly started in the meantime, which has led to a result that will be just as unpleasant for you as it also was for us. Also your group members certainly won't feel warm and happy feelings about it. Billy says what the devil is going on now, that you talk like that. Semiaza says you know the contexts very well, for which reasons we had to end our contacts and, nevertheless, declared ourselves willing to maintain purely friendly contacts further, on our own responsibility. Billy says of course. How should I forget that? Semiaza says then you probably also remember that for the further maintenance of the friendly contacts, we set certain conditions to be fulfilled and followed which were imposed on every single member of the group of your community. Billy says of course I remember that. How should I forget that too? In addition to the fact that everything was readable in the corresponding contact report for every group member, I also spoke with everyone about the fact that there could be absolutely no doubt that your conditions are now final and must also be fulfilled accordingly by every single group member, otherwise, also these remaining contacts would be broken off. It was, therefore, urged to each individual to pull him or herself together from now on in every relation, to work expediently, and to change for the better. Semiaza says sure. And what impression have you gotten? Was this arrangement followed by all? Billy says I wouldn't like to express myself about that. Semiaza says I understand, you don't want to express your opinion about anyone and don't want any ill will. When I consider that in such a way, I understand you very well, but by that, aren't you acting illogically, my friend? Think about it once very thoroughly. Still, you are probably right, but you are no longer able to change anything at all by that because we are already oriented in the best way by our analyses and have made our final decision. Billy says then finally talk already, girl, if you must deliver me bad news and the devil's message. Semiaza says you can actually call it that. So listen, then our remaining analyses revealed that our set conditions were in no way kept by various group members, which led to even much graver results than what we had worked out up to the 11th of November, after which we grasped our and our seemingly hasty decisions at that time in reference to different group members and their time-restricted emigration to America. At that time, we mentioned to you the names of the group members Elsie, Jehan, Madeline, and Benedette, who were to go away for different reasons, but we only explained the deeper reasons to you unofficially. Today, however, I cannot help but come on behalf of everyone, in order to mention these reasons in our conversation, so that they will be transmitted later in the contact report.
The first thing to mention is that the true and exact reason for all time restricted emigrations of the various group members rests in the fact that they were so harmed by the conduct of Jacobus in every relation that only through this emigration measure could they have been preserved from a departure and withdrawal from the group. But now, as a result of the remaining acquired analyses, it has arisen that the things relating to this are even very much worse and that Jacobus, in an incredibly selfish form, has had such a profoundly negative impact in all group members, especially again in the last three months, that even this measure is no longer able to lead to success, which is why you can now also finally write off this plan with America. Not only Madeline, Benedet, and Jehan have become group exiting in their subconscious because of Jacobus, but also some other group members, with which the things in this relation have also partially become rather acute. Especially with Elsie, things have already intensified to a rather peculiar form, whereby she has already partially acquired certain characteristics of Jacobus, which quite often leads to disagreements between you and her regrettably. Also, according to the recordings, Jacobus, already for quite some time, has no longer endeavored himself in a determinative and suitable form around the teaching, for whose non-compliance he feigns reasons that are not such. His thoughts and actions correspond to a stubbornness without equal, with the profound egoism being widely grown in him. The recordings also showed that he at every inappropriate opportunity, lets his egoistic thoughts and actions uninhibitedly run wild for quite some time, whereby he accuses all other group members of inactivity, parasitism and even laziness, without any justification or truth. In such cases, he went and goes so far that he treacherously incites non-group members and makes them inharmonious towards the other group members, by what means in this year alone, nine interested persons retreated from their efforts to apply for core group candidature, as my personal analyses yielded, which I made when I came across this fact. It is also clear from this that Jacobus in no way strove to change himself truthfully, so he also ignored my continuous impulses, which I sent to him since that time, when I said that he needs a wife who rebukes him with a hard kitchen utensil. Since these impulses were simply ignored by him because he wasn't willing to change truthfully and because he stubbornly continues to believe that under his way of his conduct is masculine, which it is, however, in no case. I release him immediately from my impulse irradiation, by what means his true being will again reach implementation and be in full force down to the last negative detail. I must recognize now that for him, all impulse assistance represents a pointless effort and that if another change should still enter, this must now be made by him alone, which will not and cannot be the case, however, if he doesn't voluntarily strive to wed within a short time. He. Billy says do you mean, by what you just said, that he should marry? Semyaza says sure, that is to be represented by that. Only then can he be changed, but he is afraid of that because he knows very well that he would then have to discard his selfish nature and truly behave as a man. His present nature, however, doesn't correspond yet to that of a grown man but rather to that of a teenage boy who is absolutely at odds with himself and with the world and the environment, which is why he sees only himself in every relation. We can now only give him a single opportunity for improvement, and this time, it must be final. We grant him, and thus, also the responsible group, one more time period until the last day of the month of June in the year 1980. If he hasn't finally endeavored on the right path by then, then he has to be excluded from the group. Until then, however, this contact conversation will be the last one that we will still transmit to you. So until then, no further contact conversations will be transmitted for the group members, and you have to be silent until then about all still purely friendly contacts with yourself without mentioning any details, etc. If it should turn out that by the date specified in the next year, Jacobus hasn't fundamentally changed and hasn't otherwise been excluded by the group members, then the termination of the connection to the group will also remain for all time, just as if not all group members are truly integrated into the group by then. 
This especially applies to your wife, whose actions and attitude have, for quite some time, actually been openly pursuing the same forms as those of Jacobus. Also, for quite some time, she has no longer endeavored truthfully and in honesty around the determinative concerns, which is why she has disappointed me very bitterly. Her in particular, I had locked very deeply into my friendly feelings, and now she of all has saddened and disappointed me very bitterly. She, too, should now finally be clear about everything, especially about what very important form she holds in our common mission. She must be completely clear about the fact that she represents and embodies the most important form of that example, which you have already been trying to fulfill for months in the team of three, which should then finally become the earthly and natural norm in the distant future. She, however, likewise has to discard her egoism, as this must also be the case with Jacobus. She has to recognize and learn that the true truth is not what she imagines but that this alone is the truth, which we have brought and which you have written down through your attained knowledge. Billy says see, girl, I often try to make all that clear to Jacobus as well as to my Agapula, but everything has borne no fruit. Behind everything lies, in my opinion, not only egoism, jealousy and conceit, but also anxiety, fear not wanting to understand, and stubbornly not wanting to give up their own wrong views, but there's also a rather large portion of self-pity, but also betrayal on the part of my wife. Semyaza says that will probably be denied to you, but it actually corresponds to the truth, for as I now know, your fears relating to her were fully justified. But I first recognized this in a true form a few days ago. From her side are lying and deception dishonesty and falsehood against you, the mission, and also against the group members, whom she has harmed financially as well as in belongings, as she also did to you. Billy says I know that damn well, but what should I do? I can't do more than talk and talk again, right? Semiaza says sure, and I know very well that you also tried that over and over again. Billy says yes. I most certainly do that, and certainly no one can give me a reproach concerning this. But I am mostly driven quite simply halfway to insanity with illogical answers and with senseless counter-attacks and with not thinking about what I have said and explained, such that I get fed up with it and scream out loud. Semiaza says you shouldn't let yourself be tempted into that. Billy says I know, but from time to time, my nerves just simply won't take it anymore. Semiaza says sure, I already understand, and I know very well that you have no easy time at such moments. And honestly said, I would like to confess to you once that I could never muster up as much patience as you. Only, I wouldn't raise my voice in such a way as what you can do. Rather, I would remove myself from the area of such unreasonable and stubborn human beings. Perhaps I would try the same thing again two or three times, but then I would finally break these things off, as every other human being would also do, thus, just as it would not only be the case with us, if there were still such things with us, but as it is truly the case, according to my knowledge, also with you on earth. But your patience and perseverance, my dear friend, they shouldn't also appear so fast with another human being on the earth. Billy says it may be, but I just can't help it. Maybe you understand that. Semiaza says sure. Billy says good, then at least that. But what should we do now with regard to America? If the contacts are now flattened so far that even no more contact reports will be given, then it's also no longer possible that we can clarify these America things for a new construction, etc., right? You did say that at least until the end of June of 1980, I am also no longer allowed to tell anything more about the contacts. Semiaza says that's right, sure, and it must also remain so. The credit for this belongs to Jacobus, which must now, unfortunately, be said. According to our judgment, it would have also been more right if Madeline, Benedet and Jehan didn't have to be chosen to go to America, 
but this was due to the unreasonable, unjustified, and selfish behavior and abuse of Jacobus. According to our insights, it would have been the most useful if Johann could have decided to move into the center and also Benedet and Madeline could have continued to stay there. The whole manner of Jacobus, however, required other measures, but this can now also no longer have validity, as we now have to put the whole responsibility for everything entirely into the hands of all group members. They all must now see themselves, how the continuance is to be. That is our final decision and it is certain. Billy says then that means, in other words, that at least until the end of June of 1980, you will no longer make yourselves available with pieces of advice, etc., you will keep yourselves completely out of everything, and we can no longer reach you with any concerns at all. Semyaza says sure, that is the meaning of my words. Something will only change one last time if by the date mentioned, Everything is finally organized in such a way as is expected by us. Moreover, I would still like to suggest to you that by then, even rather a month before, you create another workroom, and to be sure, here or here, as you see on this drawing here. Billy says but why that? Semyaza says if you, by the date mentioned, still continue to work furthermore in your current workroom, the greatest danger for your life will exist. The actions of the brothers H and K in the publication of the book, in addition to leading to very much success, have also set many negative things in motion. Our probability calculations relating to this revealed that your current workroom becomes extremely dangerous for you starting from the date mentioned, which is why you should make yourself another one here or here. Billy says that will, however, cost quite a lot again. Semyaza says nevertheless, no other choice remains for you. Billy says and what should happen, then, with the current office? Semyaza says other group members can use it without concern, for there is no danger for them. Who should be harmed in life and limb, this refers only to you alone. The group members themselves are neither endangered now nor in the coming time. Billy says but that is ridiculous, I think. After all, attacks can also be perpetrated on them. Semyaza says that will not be the case, for you are that person who is supposed to be turned off for the sake of concealing the truth. Thus, act in accordance with my advice, otherwise, no further help can be given to you. Billy says all right, I'll have to, whether I like it or not. But tell me, since you now also want to cut off the contact report, how does it stand, then? with your promise that I can soon take new pictures once again, when you have your new ship. Semyaza says the decision of us all stands above my promise, unfortunately, so I cannot redeem this for the time being. Under certain circumstances, depending on how the decision falls on the last day of June of 1980, I can then tell you further details about it. I will keep my promise, of that you can be sure, but until then, it can last a very long time for you. Billy says then there's probably nothing more to be done there. Semyaza says you right, unfortunately. I now have to go back again, so I must say goodbye to you. Billy says but you said, nevertheless, that you brought along the list with the names. Semyaza says it is only a first part of names which I will still transmit to you, of course, despite our decision. For now, I've listed the letters A, B and D alphabetically here, and for each letter, I listed 21 female names and 21 male names. But I can no longer read this list aloud to you now, due to lack of time, so I will simply transmit it to you at a suitable opportunity. Billy says that's also alright with me, and by the way, I am still to convey to you rather dear greetings from all group members. Semyaza says I thank them very lovingly for that and under other circumstances, I would be happy about it even very much more than today. But return to them, despite everything, also my greetings, which will be the last, unfortunately, up to the last day of June of 1980 or even forever, depending on what results up to decision day. But now, farewell. My dear friend. 
Farewell, and don't be too sad, even if our contacts are now even much rarer than what was the case in the last times. But always keep in mind our secret agreement from the 11th of November, because this is irrefutable. Billy says even so, I must come to terms with that, whether I like it or not, damn it. All this isn't so easy, damn it again. Silence is often very difficult. Till we meet again, dear child, bye, till we meet again. Semiaza says farewell, dear friend. Continuation of the contact. Semiaza says I'm sorry that I brought you up once again, but with all the saddening explanations, I forgot to mention a very important point, which we've already discussed several times, but this brought no success at all because you in no way tried to change these things. Billy says I don't understand, girl, what do you now want to address again with that? Semiaza says you will immediately understand very well. I speak of the fact that we've already laid on you several times to arrange yourself with all the group members, so that you don't have to pay monthly residential contributions anymore. We fin. Billy says about that there is really nothing more to talk about. I myself have found, for different reasons, that I should pay this rent, and that's that. In return, I have all those rooms for my family that I need for them. Also, peace is given with the fact that no accusations can be made about me, that I'm resting on the pockets of the group and taking advantage of them, in order to live in the center for free. That should now finally also be clear to you all. Semiaza says no, that isn't clear to us. We are of the conviction that you may not pay one more remuneration for the necessary rooms because your work exceeds this by hundreds and millions of times. Solely what you've done so far in work for the whole group and for all of humankind, you can never be compensated for, so it is absolutely inappropriate that you pay one more residential payment for the necessary rooms. We were never in agreement with that at any point in time, which is why this must now finally be put in order. As is common with the human beings of Earth, a purposeful contract is now to be made between you and all group members, which grants you and all your family members an absolute exemption from payments and free to use premises for life, where also the energy is to be free, which is necessary for heating and lighting and for living and preservation. We have oriented ourselves in this regard and know about the fact that also water and electrical energy, etc. are subject to fees on the earth, which is why we also want to see a corresponding clause anchored in an appropriate contract, which you shall then submit to us for inspection. Since up to now, you have done nothing in this connection to initiate these things, this time, it is to be such that these concerns are transmitted to you in writing, by what means every group member can gain insight therein and act accordingly. It's just not right that you continue to pay a remuneration because as I already often told you, neither are you able to bear this financially in the long run, nor is it a fact of fairness, for through your work already done, you have given very much more than what you can ever be compensated for. And since solely all your family members, by their presence around you, have helped you in the greatest measure with all your tasks and works and their fulfillment, the same is to apply to them. That is our decision, which you now have to hold in honor. Billy says I find that unfair. Semiaza says so would it only be if you would not act according to our instructions. If you should not act accordingly in the future, then you would also sadden me very much. Billy says I wouldn't want that but you do know my reasons for my actions. Semiaza says these should have never been accepted by the group members as right. On the contrary, all group members should have striven for your protection, in order to protect you against such unwarranted attacks and intrigues. In the future, the whole group is to be responsible for this task, and that is my final word on this matter. Now farewell, my dear friend, and act accordingly. Billy says but that. Semiaza says that was my final word on that. Farewell. Billy says okay, bye, girl. Even you seem to want to cause me trouble now. Semiaza says that doesn't correspond to the truth, my friend, think about it thoroughly and logically once. 
But now, farewell until we meet again, because I'm in a rush today and must return. Billy says it's all right. I don't want to keep you any further, I'm already going. Bye, my child, bye. Semiaza says till we meet again. Ah, one moment. Semiaza receives a call via her communication device and answers it briefly. However, I don't understand what is being said because I am not master of the spoken language. I have just received the message that my task has otherwise settled itself in the meantime, consequently, I can still remain here and report to you what has arisen with my further look into the future which I carried out once again since our last contact and whose data reach up to the year 2000. If you want, I can still inform you about it. Billy says of course. Let's hear what you have to report. The following information was first made accessible to parts of the core group in the year 2003, until then, nobody knew anything of the following conspiracy talk and actions between Semiaza and Billy. Semiaza says first, I would like to explain to you some things that will happen with regard to the group members starting from next year and I must name Guido in the first place, for whom I have not yet found out the exact date of the occurrence that is approaching him, however. But it will certainly be in the course of next year, when it happens, that Guido will suffer an infarction of his heart and will have to be hospitalized. The heart attack will, indeed, be quite serious, but he will overcome everything well, so you don't have to worry. The whole thing will, however, bring with it harmful consequences for Guido's health, consequently, in the future, he will succumb to heart-related problems, which he will have to bear throughout his remaining years of life, which he will do, however, with bravado. Although more or less unpleasant setbacks will appear during the later years, nevertheless, he will master these just as well as also the separation and divorce from his wife which will be pending in 1981 or 1982. Nevertheless, he will later be Wednesday again, namely to a core group member, who will step into appearance during the 80s and will become his spouse. So much is to be said with regard to Guido up to the year 2000. I haven't investigated further about his future. Billy says that's enough already. But what about Elsie? You recently gave me an indication that she will become disloyal to the mission and our community. Semiaza says that's right, because in the course of the upcoming 80s, she will, for frivolous and unjustified reasons, withdraw from the group community and go her separate way. The reasons will be such that they relate to unfulfillable demands that are familiar to you. She will first appear irregularly in the center and at the meetings for some time, after which she will then distance herself and withdraw from everything definitively. But to my knowledge, Quetzal has already given you an explanation about that. Billy says he has, yes. Elsie's demands really are unfulfillable, and I ask myself, from where she actually thinks. Also her imperiousness is a thing in itself with which one cannot get along, along with certain behaviors. So perhaps it is really better if she removes herself from our mission and from all of us and has nothing more to do with the whole thing. Semiaza says we think that too, because her behavior regarding her demands could cause a lot of harm, and to be sure, both in your group as well as abroad with those not involved. But listen further to what I have to say concerning Eva's bidding of the sun, which will bring you two and the group members very much joy, it probably isn't necessary to give you further explanations, because that which you already know from me should be sufficient. It is to be the mentioned that also Benedette will bring a son into the world during the 80s, and that on the 9th of May, 1982. Also Cornelia will follow with the birth of a child, for on the 31st of July, 1986 she will give birth to a daughter. Another birth will then occur once more through Eva, for she will give birth to a daughter. Unfortunately, the child will be severely disabled, but this will change nothing in your love for the girl. You, dear friend, will be the father of the child, who will be born on the 18th of January, 1997. 
Concerning the divorce of your wife, Eva will become your future life partner, but you won't be in a civil marriage but rather in a free marriage, as we also exercise it, when a husband and wife will live together. During the first time relating to this, during approximately 12 years, a little more will still happen, but I wasn't able to clarify this completely yet, which is why I will first report further details about this to you when I can give exact facts. Therefore, don't ask me about it. I will certainly explain everything to you when I have exact information. Moreover, I must suggest to you that you do not speak openly about all the things mentioned, not even with regard to Guido, in order not to cause fears and anxieties and in order not to rashly influence the course of that which is already fixed, for perhaps one and another would seek to change something that may not be changed. Billy says you should know, nevertheless, that I only ever pass on information that you allow me either. Moreover, I myself have come across the fact that I wrap myself in silence even with Guido, in order not to frighten him. Semiaza says of course, I know that you will be silent. I simply wanted to suggest it to you once again. Billy says you are an illogical, my child. But now, was that everything that you had to report, or are there still other things up to the turn of the millennium? Semiaza says yes, there are still sad things to report, if you want to hear them. They also concern your family. Billy says oh, if you speak of sadness, then you probably mean the sorrow of death, if I understand you correctly and interpret your facial expression correctly. Semiaza says yes, I speak of that. I still don't have the exact dates, but I've already fathomed the approximate years. Billy says if you say that then you are already quite sure, right? Semiaza says quite, yes. Billy says so then it concerns my family members. Which one or ones must I carry to the grave then? Semiaza says there will also be a core group member who will die in the early 90s, perhaps already at the end of the 80s, namely Hins Benz, who sees his best friend in you. Billy says, well, it really hits me, because even if one has already often experienced the same, it still lashes out on the psyche again and again. One really doesn't like to lose a human being. That always gives me very much to think about, and indeed even when I see unfamiliar human beings dying or even only hear of their dying, when they die or are killed etc. But you are evading me with your answer, dear girl. You have addressed my family. Semiaza says should I really, Billy says, yes. It'll be alright. Moreover, it is inevitable, because the current life doesn't last forever, and indeed, also not with me and also not with my relatives. This is as clear to me as the fact that life begins at begetting. Semiaza says then I will speak of your brother Carl, who will suffer a fatal traffic accident almost certainly in the year 1984 or 1985. Then, in 1989, your father will die, around 1994, your mother, and then, around the turn of the millennium, your brother Gottlieb, and shortly after that, your sister Verena will follow. You wanted me to tell you this. Billy says, yes, I wanted that. Thanks. As usual, nothing is to change, I think. Semiaza says I am sorry, my dear friend. It. Billy says but it was all right. You wanted to say, nevertheless, that it wasn't right that you told me everything. Semiaza says yes, that's what I wanted to say. I am truly sorry. Billy says you don't need to be sorry, girl, because I told you, nevertheless, that I know that the current life doesn't last forever. Semiaza says but there are five of your family members who will part from your world in only about 15 years. Billy says I know that and I've also already experienced it several times. Semiaza says I know that too, your dear friends and lifelong companions, whom you lost so tragically. Billy says please. We shouldn't talk about that. Already that which you've reported to me hurts enough. I don't need any more right now. So let's talk about something else. 
How does it stand with my children Gilgamesh, Atlantis, and Methuselah? Semyaza says do you really want to know that too? Billy says let's go whole hog. Semyaza says as you wish Gilgamesh will succumb to a very serious car accident and will become severely disabled at the beginning of the 90s, around the time she comes of age. She will no longer be accessible to her task in terms of the mission and everything, and neither will Methuselah, who will completely alienate himself from the mission. At first, this will also be the case with Atlantis, but at a later time, he will find a return to the mission and to the group community. On the 4th of June, I could not yet give you all this information, unfortunately, because it was not yet known to me. Billy says all right. It is sufficient for today, in order to be finished with that. Somehow, I will soon digest and take in your bad news. You shouldn't doubt that. Semiaza says I don't, because in your life you already have so many things that must be processed and taken in, by which many other human beings would be broken. Billy says I don't want to argue with you. Rather, I would still like to ask you a question. Semiaza says you change the subject quickly. But that is, indeed, your way, in order not to let unpleasantness become tragedy. So then, bring forward your question. Billy says I know from Quetzal that the volcanoes of Savius, Etna, and Stromboli should become very active in the coming time, and Savius should erupt when the Third World War comes. Is that still valid? Semiaza says the situation concerning the eruption of Sevius has changed, but the danger will exist furthermore. The things of world events have already shifted time-wise and certain prophecies will thereby change, be cancelled, or come true at a later point in time. The Etna volcano and Stromboli, however, will become very active, particularly starting in the late 90s, and will carry the risk of exploding in themselves. Similarly, this applies to an Atlantic volcano of the Spanish archipelagos. But now, dear friend, I still want to give you the list with the names here, which I've forgotten to hand over to you. Billy says thanks. Surely, also all the group members will be pleased to receive this list of names. Oh, strange names, which aren't so unknown to me, however. Somehow, I remember them. Are these now the new names that you wanted to bring me?